What's up, everybody? I'm Chris Kamozzi, and you're watching The Bare Knuckle Show with Brian Socha. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 50, Friday, September 22nd. In the main event, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt puts his world title on the line against the undefeated Chris Camosi. Also, heavyweights collide in the co-main event when heavy hitter Josh Cudley Bear Copeland knuckles up with former boxing champ Steve Aurelius. Watch history unfold live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. We are all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socha, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckle Show. We're glad you're hanging out. You're like, Bare Knuckle, Evan's Wedding Crashers. Yeah, because it's the big day. We're going to talk about that coming up this Friday for Evan. He's going to be taking that march down the aisle. Looking forward to that. We're going to be filming things and uh, see what we can grab from the drunken stupidity at the wedding. We're looking forward to that. A lot of other good stuff today as well. Uh, matter of fact, today we have the undefeated. Chris Camozzi. He's going to join us ahead of this world title fight at BKFC 50. I can't believe we're there already. September 22nd. Speaking of BKFC 50, we'll also be joined by Josh Cudley Bear Copeland, uh, who's got a big match as well. You heard the bucked up burp, Evan, Evan Zentar. Oh, if, you're, if, you're, if your wife to be is watching this, I'm sure she really wants to give uh, you that kiss that's now. That's she ain't heard. <laughs> she hasn't heard that yet. Have you ever farted in front of your. Uh... Only in your mouth. No, 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 seriously. In your relationship. Some people don't do that. Have you? Yeah. You've, so you, how about you, Brandon? You fart in front of your girl? Yeah. I have never farted in front of my wife, and I've known her for, for years. I don't believe that. I, well, I, I've done it silently and, and blamed the dog, but I've never, I've never, she's never heard me do it. I don't think I've ever heard her do it either. But then, if she's going to the bathroom and stuff, I'm not lurking outside <laughs> to listen for it. Like you know, I'm not, my wife's All not right. farting on me. This is fucking disgusting. Yeah, I, let's get back I'm to the rundown, being, please. Well, you brought it up. You're burping <laughs> you in the mic. It up, you <laughs> fucking pig. <laughs> You're burping in the mic. Next. All right, next. You guys you guys are so so sheltered. I mean, geez, can't you talk about bodily functions. Uh, we're also going to be talking to Josh Cudley Bear Copeland. We got off. We talked about that. Looking forward to see where he is, uh, where his head's, where his mind space is at. Uh, we're going to check a video message that the champ, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt, sent into us about Chris Camozzi and how he feels the fight coming up. Also, a BKFC fighter drastically changing their look. We'll get into that and show you some uh, video on that as well. A new fight announcement. Uh, there's a possibility of that we could have today. We're waiting for breaking news. We'll see if we get to that during the show. Also, footage of fighters celebrating their birthdays and so much more. It's all here on the Bare Knuckle Show. We're excited for you to be here. I see Big Ben's in the chat. I see Brian Maxwell's in the chat. What's up? Scott's in there as well. Michael, uh, the list is endless. Everyone's excited. Uh, congratulations to Evan from Big Ben for the wedding. Before we get into anything, let's talk about that wedding, Evan. Let's talk about that. So that's fine. We've been talking about it on the I'm show sure for a couple more weeks. pressing matters. No, nah, this is, well, that's pretty pressing. You're changing your life. So... Where are you at now? You're leading up to it this Friday. Are you nervous at all? Second thoughts? Are you right there with it? Do you love it? Where are you at? I'm very excited to see Nate at the altar. <laughs> I think Nate being at the altar means more than seeing your bride best, to you. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> it's so funny to me. So are we going to... Is Nate comfortable if we film like 10 seconds of your vowels or something? Can we put that on the show to show Nate uh, doing his thing? Yeah. So we'll do that. And then do you think... Who do you think out of our crew that's going to be there at your wedding, of the Bare Knuckle crew... Do you have us all like set aside at a special table? Yeah, I have, I have all you guys <laughs> tucked animals? in the back, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> far away from my family. Who do you, <laughs> smart move. Who do you think is going to get the drunkest out of everybody? It's open bar, right? You. Do you think so? Yeah, I've seen you on the plane ride man. home. <laughs> That's when there's free vodka. Is there yeah. free vodka no, at your yeah. wedding? Jack and Coke, yeah. please. It's six in the morning. No, no I, 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 I do orange juice and vodka. Give me some credit. Yeah. What do they call a screwdriver? Yeah, you would too. You got to live that life when you're there. Uh, it makes me a better dad when I get home. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're excited about your wedding. You're a better driver when you get up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get picked up, bro. I drive. Right. I, don't, I don't drive. Uh, uh, let's see. Hey, I got Kamozi texting me. It says, waiting for host to start the meeting. That means that when he comes on. He's coming on? Yeah, he's coming on in a little while. Oh. We he's just said on, that at the top of the show. He's not on until uh, uh, for a little bit. That's what I thought. So yeah. could you text him and let him know that just to hang out for there for a minute? Because we, we want to get to some Lorenzo Hunt stuff. And I mean, I love talking about Evan's wedding and who's going to get the drunkest there. They're, they're claiming it's me. We'll see. If I'm, I'll, I'll probably be on video doing the worm or something if that's me. But I, I think our president's going to get pretty drunk. That's what I think. I think he's going to let loose and give you a nice speech. That's what I'm looking forward to. We're going to have a good time at Evan's wedding. Again, we'll be filming if anything happens. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll be good. So let's talk about 
what do we have next? Oh, birthdays. Yeah, there were some birthdays celebrated. I want to talk about some birthdays. Christine Faria recently had a birthday. Happy birthday to her. Now, this is from last year, I believe, but I, I just thought this was cool. I don't know what she did this year. I didn't see much of it online. So I don't know if she's out hanging out with Floyd Mayweather again. They were at the club together last year for her birthday. Floyd wants to be with the world champ. I love it. So you know Christine can have a fun time. Happy birthday to Christine Faria. Uh, we don't have any... Um, any um, pictures of this, but I believe HD Davis celebrated recently as well. From I just saw that before we, we yeah. signed on here. Happy birthday to you too, Davis. We appreciate you guys and we love your birthday. Another guy, uh, I, I love when he celebrates. I love when he posts. I love when his fight's coming up because there's so much stuff to pick from. Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt recently had a birthday. And there he is. There's his uh, cake with Kamozi's face on it. What's it say? I can't read that. Cannibalized Kamozi. Is that what it says? Yeah. That's So he's... He's for his birthday. He wants a big Chris Camozzi win. We'll be talking to Chris in just a couple of minutes. Uh, birthday beatdown, as he calls it. And the other thing I thought was interesting was, you know, the champ's out. The champ's celebrating his birthday. He's out to a beautiful dinner uh, with, the, with Mrs. Juggernaut. And we have some video from that dinner that was captured by the champ that we want to take a look at right now. Let's check out that video. Birthday celebration with the champ. Beautiful restaurant, too. Let me see your shorts. Stand up. Let me see your shorts. Uh, right now. Right now. Right now. Keep it up there. Look at that waiter. Look at that waiter. Like, He's like, damn. So, so I love that they're in a beautiful restaurant like that celebrating his birthday. The chef doesn't care. The chef doesn't care, man. And she's wearing juggernauts, you know, on, on her on her uh, posterior, on her derriere. And and I love it that that the, the like you said, the waiter's staring at it. The whole place is like, what's going on here? That's the champ, man. Make room for the champ. Happy birthday to the champ. Uh, he'll he'll be taking on Chris Camozzi. He's going to join us in just a couple minutes. But before we get to that, we always check the mailbag. And the reason I'm talking about Lorenzo in the mailbag, by the way, you can send your photos, your videos, whatever you Don't want make in. Let me come over there and snatch you up off that couch. It's time for mail call. There it is, the mail call. Thank you, Evan, for that. The Bare Knuckles Show at gmail.com. Send your videos, send your pictures. We'll post them on the wall. And by the way, I have these still. We're going to find some more spots for them. We're going to kind of rearrange things a little bit. But just so you know, here's two of the ones I got. This is the guy from Denver uh, that brought the alligator with him. He had his alligator bite this and like as an autograph. And this is his son. With uh, We're speaking about Lorenzo, but then beating me up. We're going to hang that up, too. So we didn't forget about you guys. And the rest of you just sent in. Keep them coming. We love uh, being able to communicate with you and... Find out what you like and don't like and everything like that. So you can send it in. Uh, Lorenzo Hunt, speaking of sending stuff in, he sent a vlog in, uh, a quick video. I have yet to see this. They're going to air it now, but um, let's see what he has to say. It's about his fight coming up with Chris Camozzi. He'll be on with us in just a couple minutes. My name is Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt. I am the double world champion for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. And I will be the main event for BKFC 50, September 22nd. I want everybody to tune in and watch yet another Viciously viral knockout. Watch Chris Camozzi attempt to stay awake during a five-round banger with the best bare-knuckle fighter in the world. Ain't no champ unless I say so. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens coming up in Denver. Ain't no champ unless he says so. That was interesting. Uh, Lorenzo Hunt, never short on words and never short on confidence. And he's a great fighter, so so why not? But that's how he thinks it's going to go. I believe that Chris Camozzi is in the virtual waiting room. Is he in the virtual green room? He is here. Ah, oh, Camozzi's here. We're going to talk to Chris Camozzi. I'm really looking forward to that. Let's bring him on. As we're getting ready to bring him on, uh, don't forget, uh, Big Ben wants to know why he's not on the wall. Uh Oh, we'll put you on the wall, Big Ben. Send your photo in. Did you send one in? There I think you is. might have. We'll put you on the wall. Oh, there's Chris Camozzi. Heck with Big Ben. I'm sorry. Chris Camozzi here. Big. Look at that. That scared me, man. You're right there. You're ready to rock. How are you, Chris? Now I'm on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're on the wall, man. We got to get you. We got to get you on the wall too. Maybe I'll put up that Gator picture you sent in on the wall. You want me to do that? Yeah, that or one with me with my new belt. Oh, right away he goes. I love it. Well, we're going to see what happens. If you get the new belt, we'll throw you up there as well. We're glad to have you on here. But um, before we get into your fight, I don't know if you were listening earlier. I know you watched the show. You've heard us talk about Evan getting married. He's getting married this Friday. Um, any advice for Evan as he marches down the aisle into holy matrimony? Oh, man. Like, I don't, don't know. do it. I've been married once, but... Uh, you were married before? <laughs> I'm not oh. anymore, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> don't take my advice. Yeah. <laughs> Evan, there's your uplifting message for your marriage as you head into your wedding week. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, <laughs> Chris, I got your back. <laughs> we can tell you do. Now, uh, I know that you're going to get into sparring in a little while here, so I appreciate you taking the time with us. 
Uh, and I know that you're fighting in your town. How far are you from the arena? I'm curious about that. Uh, like 15 minutes. So you're just going to hop my, in your my, car. Wow. Yeah, my house is a little further, but the gym, yeah, like 15 minutes or so. Maybe 30 from my house, not too far at all. You're right there. So that's going to be amazing. You're fighting in your hometown. Have you done this quite often? I mean, on such a big event, like you're going for a, a world title. This has got to be the biggest time you fought in your hometown. Yeah, I would say this is the biggest one. You know, I obviously fought here a bunch early on in my career, and then I fought here for Glory a couple times. Um, other than that, just Glory and you guys, the two big shows that I fought for. I never made it around to the UFCs when they were here. I was already booked every time they came here. Yeah, I mean, that, you're talking about UFC, Glory. You've done so much in fighting. And, and the thing was, when I was talking to uh, Lorenzo, and we'll probably have him on maybe next week. We'll let him speak as well. But when I was doing my interview for the, the Spotlight piece, which is going to be on the app, uh, we, we were kind of talking about your records, looking at both your records, and, and you're 2-0. and um, And in looking at your record, he didn't – he's kind of like, who'd you fight? Who'd you fight? I'm going to give you, I want to give you a chance to speak on that. Who did you fight? That, that's what he was asking me. Yeah. I mean, you know, you and I did the spotlight too. We covered this a little bit, but look, I fought two UFC veterans. They might not have had um, bare knuckle experience, but they were longtime fighters. So, you know, I take nothing away from those guys' careers. I got all the respect in the world for both those guys. Um, and, you know, I came out on top and it ended up not being as hard as I thought it would be. So, that's always a great thing, but you know, I always train for the worst. And right now, you know, I've gone into full on camp for this fight. I would honestly ask like, who has he fought? You know, I've heard of a couple names on his record, but other than that, you know, most of them are people I don't think even fight anymore or ever had a career. You know, most of those names I don't even recognize at all. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a fair assessment. If you're bouncing that back to him like that, I do, do you think that, I mean, Lorenzo's ever fought a guy like you? I mean, you're a little a bit of a different animal, in my estimation. Look, it's, you know, it's cliche to say, but, uh, you know, I don't believe he has. I think I'll be the biggest guy he's ever fought. Um, the longest reach, I would say, obviously, the most technical, the best striker he's fought. You know, I've, I've competed all over the world on the best organizations, and I've never been outstruck. I take that back. I've been outstruck by one guy, I can fully admit. And uh, but one out of, I think, 52 is not bad, you know, and Lorenzo Hunt's not going to be the one to outstrike me. Wait a minute. Give the guy a spotlight. If he outstruck Chris Camozzi, who is he? Let's put let's put him over a little bit here. <laughs> I've said it before. He's a buddy of mine. Actually, that was Lorenz Larkin. All right. He actually, uh, I went blind in the first round in one eye. Um, it was a crazy fight. What? That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. In the first round, we went to a decision, but uh, it wasn't my night that night. But here's the thing. Like, Lorenzo's proud of his last performance with Mike Richmond and showing a little bit of uh, grit and coming back on some adversity. You know, hats off to him on that. But, I mean, I've had a career full of gritty, gritty battles against some badass motherfuckers. So, you know, if he wants to ask who I fought and bare knuckle, you know, both those guys, again, UFC veterans. And then you look at my UFC career, you look at my entire career in general, I fought the best of the best, which, you know, he cannot say the same. So um, as far as it doesn't seem that way, but I always ask this question, is there any intimidation at all looking at Lorenzo? He's good at what he does. He, he talks loudly, but he's a great fighter too. He's quick. Uh, is there intimidation heading in to fight him at all in your mind? In intimidation? No, not at all. I mean, I, I got respect for him for sure. You know, I think in this game, you're stupid to uh, not have respect for a champion one and then just your opponent in general. You know, I've had a few fights where I kind of um, – overlook some people and the fights ended up being tougher than I thought. So I haven't made that mistake in a really long time. You know, I'm, I'm planning on going in there and fighting the best fighter in the world. Like that's what I've prepared for. So, yeah, I mean, no intimidation. I've been doing this way too long. Look, we're fighters, you know, whenever people are like, Oh, so and so scared or whatever, that always drives me nuts. Even, you know, in the UFC, these guys aren't scared. We, we fight every day. You know, you don't get into this sport because you're nervous or scared to fighting. It's, it's my favorite thing in the world to do, so I can't wait for next week. Now, the fans are excited, too. And, uh, again, we're in Denver, which is your hometown. They're going to come unglued for you. But another thing you look at in Denver, and this is something you have to look at, you've been there training in this high altitude. You're used to this. Here comes Lorenzo. Now, he's fought in Denver before, right? But here he comes again. And I don't think he uh, – No, not Denver. I'm sorry. He thought it, was, it was Albuquerque. It was high altitude there That was because there were mountains there, he thought. But there, there's high altitude is what I'm saying. You training in it, he doesn't seem to be too worried about it. He said that's an excuse for people uh, if they lose and stuff. Do you truly believe that, or do you think the altitude's a difference maker? You've done it. No. Yeah, I mean, the altitude is a difference maker. Um, 
you look at major sports organizations, you know, football, everything, these billion dollar organizations, they all come here early. You know, you can't tell me that they don't have people that know what they're talking about, looking at that and planning for that. Um, anybody that's ever said it's a, a myth or anything like that is completely wrong. And, you know, he'll see, I mean, he's always hoping for that first round quick fight. You know, his fight in Albuquerque was what one round It was it's quick 45 seconds, a minute. Um, it plays a factor later on and it's always not the, it's not your lungs necessarily, right? Your body seizes up. You, you don't have enough blood flow. You don't have um, enough oxygen to your blood. So you, your legs get heavy, your arms get heavy. You know, I hope he's listening because I want this to play in his mind during that fight. If this fight goes long, he's going to start to feel that, you know, that wear and tear on your body. You don't recover as quick. Your chest gets a little bit tighter and tighter. You will see. I'm hoping it doesn't go quick either. I'm looking to get him out of there quick because, you know, I'm not getting paid by the minute. But I want to make a statement that built mine, and yeah, quicker the better for me. Of course, you're right. You're not getting paid by the minute. So if I say Lorenzo Hunt to you, if I just came up to you and said the name Lorenzo Hunt, word association, what goes through your mind? I mean, now that I know who he is, I had no idea who he was until I, I came over to Bare Knuckle. Um, you know, that's why every video he's got to say, this is the champ, champ, this is Lorenzo Hunt, this is... You know, if you're that big, you don't have to introduce yourself. People just know. Um, if you said his name to me, I would just say, you know, brawler. He's tough. He's got power, and he's a brawler. I don't think there's much more to him than that. Okay, there you go. And so this is something, this is a fight you've wanted for a while from what I could see because you'd spoke about it when you were cornering G, when he was cornering Bryce. But even before that, I believe, you'd spoke uh, to Susan Singari about it and you said at, during the interview, I, I just, I think I saw it on your page maybe at the end of a video you made, you said you want Lorenzo Hunt. So this has been a fight you've been, pardon the pun, hunting for since you got here. Now you got it. It's got to feel good and you're in your hometown. It's got to feel even better. Mentally, where are you heading to this fight? You seem like you're great. Mentally, great. I mean, I've never been more excited for a fight, honestly. Like you said, world title fight in my hometown. I mean, I've been counting the days for, what, two months now. So, yeah, mentally, I feel great. Again, this is my favorite thing in the world to do. You know, even in my past, like, losses and stuff, you know, I love fighting. You know, that's why that's why I haven't stopped yet. I'm not doing it for the money. I don't need the money, um, but I just love doing it, you know, and I'm going to do it as long as I can until I'm too old. That way, when I look back, I'm – Real happy. You build a legacy. If you don't need the money, I can contend that if you don't need the money, you can fight if you want. If you want to split it halfway with me, I need it. I'll take the money. I mean, you build a legacy, I'll take the money. <laughs> we said this way. Did we say this? Was it you before that I was saying, don't ever say that in front of a promoter? Was that you I was talking about, that, that you don't need the money? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. But here's the thing is, like Dave knows, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make, you know, Feldman and I have had a lot of conversations. I'm always trying to make as much money as I can. Of course. Like, I don't need it, but I want it because. That's right. Look, I put so much time into this sport. I'm going to be a millionaire when I'm done. So Good for you. I'm smart with my money. I don't buy a bunch of flashy stuff. And, you know, I, I've invested my money in taking care of myself in the right way. So all of this is bonus for me to continue and have more when I'm older. And you definitely don't invest it in, uh, in, in podcast hosts that are begging for your money. That's a smart move because we're real dirtbags. Yeah. So, so hey. the other thing, you were talking about mentally how you're feeling heading into this. And you had told me recently in a private conversation that, you were really in this camp uh, visualizing, meditating. You, you feel like that's really helped you. Can you can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I've always been kind of interested in it, and I never really knew how to do it because I'm, I've got, like, ADD. You know, I'm all over the place. Me too. It's really hard for me to have dead silence and just sit and focus. You know, I, I need, like, background noise or, or whatever. So I put a lot of practice into that. Um, and it kind of came more about after I had Belcher on my podcast, mm -hmm. Alan Belcher is real big into it. And, you know, he kind of was talking about it and I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. So he sent me a bunch of stuff and, um, I enjoy it, man. It, it's one thing that can actually help me focus my mind in, because again, like I said, if you have ADD, you know, like your brain, your brain bounces all over, yep. which does make me good at a lot of things because I can control and handle a lot of things at once. But sometimes when it comes down to focusing on one thing, that's oh. tough. And yeah, visualization, meditation has been really big in me being able to see this fight, focus my training and just like zone in on, on one goal. So I want you to uh, show us how you meditate, shut your eyes, go hmm, and think. think. <laughs> I know you don't really do it like that. Meditation is actually very helpful. I've done it as well. 
because uh, my brain's all over the world. Like right now, as you're talking, I'm listening, but I have 15 things in my head. You know how it goes if you have any kind of ADD, which I think I have. I'm not sure. Um, but otherwise, I'm just very confused all the time. But <laughs> meditate, predict, envision. Where is this fight going? Because I can tell you right now, Lorenzo said it's going to be the most viciously, I don't know if you saw it, viral KO that he's ever done. Um, I'm not asking you to talk trash. Just what do you envision for the fight? I mean, I envision whooping his ass from bell to bell, no matter what round that ends in. Um, here's the thing. There's one thing, you know, knockouts are great, right? I've always enjoyed knocking people out, obviously, but there's a lot of times I want to make people quit. I want to make them quit so they know that they quit because then he'll never want to fight me again. He'll never want to step in there again because he'll know deep down. I'll know, you know, guys can find a way out for sure. And the fans let it slide. But when you're in there with somebody, I've, I've had guys quit on me before, you know, and I don't always call them out for it, but I know that they quit. They know that I know. And there's no better feeling than that because that's just, that's ultimate domination right there. Knockouts, anybody can get knocked out. You know, you get hit wrong or whatever, you get caught, you come back. When you quit or somebody just beats the brakes off you, you don't want to get back in there with them. So that's the goal for me. I'm going to make this statement. I'm going to make it ugly for him. If it's not quick, it's going to be a long, long night for him, and it's going to be miserable. Have you noticed, before I let you go, uh, have you noticed that Lorenzo, as a fan, maybe the people in the pod, uh, podcast and the chat can pick up on this too, Ren Lorenzo's almost so good, right? He's so fast that sometimes when he gets hit, it's like, oh, my God, I got hit. Like, what happened? Have you picked that up in studying tapes of him? I know we kind of talked about that the other day when we were producing the spotlight. Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if he's surprised or if he doesn't take hits well, but September 22nd, we're going to find out because there's no way that I'm not touching him constantly. So, you know, he's fast. He's got a, he's got a lot of problems. He, he presents me a lot of a lot of problems, but, you know, we've done more than more than what we need to prepare for this. So I feel fully, fully confident. I've never been more confident in a fight actually in my entire career. That's great. We'd like to hear that. I know the fans are looking forward to it. And I just got one more last minute question. I was going to wrap up with that one, but this is good because you touched on it earlier on during the interview. Uh, Lorenzo's last fight with Mike Richmond. Mike Richmond's a guy that has been, he was touted in bare knuckle fighting championship. He's going to be the next big thing. He's on the way up. He's on the way up. What did you think of that fight? I mean, like you said earlier, it was quick, but was Juggernaut in trouble and he pulled one out of his sleeve or what, what, what was your read on that fight? I mean, yeah, he was definitely in trouble. Um, Richmond let his guard down and got overconfident and yeah, one mistake, you know, that's the thing, Lorenzo, like I will give him props, like one mistake can ruin your night, you know, against him. And so again, that's one of those problems, but you know, I've got a lot more fight IQ in me. Um, Richmond all respect to him, but he's a blown up, you know, 135 pounder. I've been fighting these big divisions my entire life. Like, the last time I saw 135 pounds, I was probably in sixth grade, you know, in, uh, I think that's what he was fighting in Bellator. And then I was shocked to actually see him back up at like those bigger weights. So, you know, all respect to him, but I mean, those were never his real weight classes and he gave Lorenzo hell. Well, I, I, I'm excited to see you fight Lorenzo. I'm excited that you're going to be in your hometown. The crowd's going to be electric. They always are in Denver. Now you're there fighting oh, yeah. for a world title. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch as a fan. Uh, I wish you a great fight. You seem confident. You seem mentally ready. And I, there's very few people that love the fighting industry as much as Chris Camozzi. And I'm pleasure to have you on here. Thanks for taking the time for the Bare Knuckle Show. I know you have to go spar, so I want to let you go do that. It's my other favorite day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank I'm you, here Chris. at the gym right now. Um, I, I know you are. Yeah, when you guys get, go ahead. You can hear it. Uh, I was going to say, when you guys get to town, if you guys want to come to the gym anytime, let me know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Evans. We'll put Evans, you in the cage. I, I, me and you? I don't want to hurt you before your fight, Chris. Oh, man. Hey, you know, Mike, <laughs> uh, what is it? Um, Mike came down the other day. He was here doing promotions. And I told him, you know, here at Genesis, we actually have the cage from UFC 1 here. Oh, really? The original cage. Yeah. Really? So we'll get you in there with Evan. Now, Evan's getting married. Evan, 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 I don't yeah, know, I'll man. Be a, I'm, I'm really mad. I'm going to miss the show. He's, go, he's, he's getting married. He's yeah, going to miss the I'll show. He's going on his on honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. you'll know she's a keeper if she lets you stream the fight at the wedding. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's no question. She'll she'll be out on the last day. She'll want to go do something, and I'm like, sorry. Nah, I'm watching the fights. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Evan, I think that he planned this whole wedding and everything around the fact that he knew you were going to offer me to step in the cage with him, and that yeah. was his way out of it. That's, actually, that's yeah. what I'm going with. Evan. I'm always thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm upset I wasn't invited. Whoa! Hey, how about that? Actually, if you want to come, somebody somebody's plus one bailed. 
Don't so you love that? The B I list. I got room for one more. <laughs> You're on the B list, Camozzi. He put you on the B Come list. On Come on in. Eat some. Eat some fillet. Yeah. Order up. Get the eight dollar upcharge. Uh, See, I got to get out of there quick and quick, easy and clean because I have a wedding to go to the next day. I'm leaving oh, at like six a.m. Dude, when you have a chance, and, and I believe you got fight the night in UFC. Was it against Riggs? Yeah. Okay. When you have a chance, and this is going longer, I'm sorry for keeping you longer, but ask Chris Lytle about the story when he fought Joe Riggs and how he had a wedding to go to the next day and how they he was in the wedding and his eye was busted or something, so they wouldn't even let him in the pictures. <laughs> they made him stand out of the pictures, dude. So There's a chance that happens. It's my girl's dad's wedding, actually. We're going to, we leave at 6 a.m. after the fight. Well, bro, I mean, you got to remember, too, now that your girl, you're going to her dad's wedding now, and we talked about it last time you're on. I, I call you out on this. You've been together for a while. She's going to start asking questions, man, so just be ready for the answers. I just watched the... Uh the finish of Joe Riggs in UFC. Holy shit. Yeah. I never, the, the knee is just nonstop. That's a crazy fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, you can tell Lorenzo I did it quicker than him, yeah, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I love it. All right, Chris Camozzi, you're awesome. Always glad to have you on. Thank you for following the show. And, and like I said, you, you are a guy that tells me you watch. You tell me what goes on, so I know you're into it. I appreciate that. And we're looking forward to Thanks seeing you soon. Man. Thank you. Yeah, I'll catch the rest of the show here after practice. All right, Chris. Later, man. See you, man. Thank you. All right, see you guys. See you, buddy. Bye. All right, uh, let's see. Is everything all right? That's what I heard. That's what I heard about uh, from Josh Cudley Bear Copeland because we ran a little long. Sorry. He's being patient. No, that's right. He's in the he's in the waiting room. Do you think uh, we can show that that finish? That's just I, I don't know. If I, don't know. I would love this. I know what I'm what you're talking about because I watched it the other night in prep for this. But I don't know. We might get say, flagged for I'd that. Say too. if you've never seen it, just Google or YouTube. Uh, Joe Riggs, Chris Camozzi. It's a violent finish. Do it, yeah. Do it after you're done watching the right, show. Right, right. Yeah, it's not now. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, you know, you can uh, see what he means and see what we're talking about. It is, it's pretty crazy, dude. It's sick. I didn't actually remember it. I didn't see it. I should say until the other day when I was looking stuff up. Um, I just didn't remember it at the time. So we have Cuddly Bear coming on. He's been waiting. We appreciate it. Josh Copeland's going to be on with us next, and then we have a bunch more stuff to cover as well. Glad you're here today on the Bare Knuckle Show. As we're waiting, remember, share the wealth, let people know about the show. You can hit the like button on YouTube if that's where you're watching. You can share it with your friends. You can subscribe. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to keep building this thing. And this is just the beginning. I mean, this is just us hanging out. There's a lot more. We've had private meetings that we've been talking about where this show is going to grow and be bigger. It's going to be something you're going to want to be a part of. Uh, some free giveaways involved too, uh, including money, which is always good. Uh, maybe I can win some of that. Josh Cuddly Bear Copeland coming on. There's a lot of stuff I want to unpack. He's going to be fighting Steve Herilius. Uh Oh, he's on with Okay, Steve Herilius. Let's bring Josh Copeland in. He's, he's probably one of the best dressed men. He always seems like he's dressed nice when it comes to press conferences. And probably one of the nicest people uh, that I've ever met in outside of fighting. Josh Cuddly Bear Copeland, where are you, my man? Let's see you. There he is. Look at that. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? I am good. I am uh, not dressed to impress right now. Wow. Just finished training, uh, but I do appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you being here, and you're keeping. Uh, we, we're used to seeing fighters in cars on here a lot of times when they get interviewed. Everywhere you look, you ever notice that fighters are always in cars when they're being interviewed? Uh, so we went from a studio to a car. We're happy to have you. You're on the move. You're on the move. You're on the way up in bare knuckle fighting championship. And I know you got a big fight coming up with Steve Aurelius, and I want to talk about that briefly, but I, I kind of want to unpack some stuff about you because people are just getting to know you. And, and I feel like it's, it's, you're going to talk about fighting everywhere you go, but I want to get to know you more. And there's some interesting facts about you I found. Uh, apparently, you're from Arkansas. That's correct, right? I, correct. I was born in Idaho, but grew up in Arkansas. Okay, so born in Idaho. It's fun to say that, Idaho. And then you were also, <laughs> I'm so mature. You were also uh, in Arkansas for, the, for your school career and stuff like that. What was interesting to me is uh, one time when we talked, I, I spoke to you, such a big guy, I figured that this local schools, local sporting organizations would be licking their lips, drooling, saying this guy is going to come in and just crush everything, come into the combat sports or wrestling in schools, whatever it may be, and he's just going to be our guy. He's going to take us to the top. That didn't happen to you in high school. Why were you not involved in wrestling in your high school? So, uh, I wish I was definitely, especially during my MMA, MMA career, but, uh, wrestling in Mississippi were the last two States to get wrestling. I, I graduated in 2002 and then, um, yeah, I want to say wrestling didn't come there for five, six, seven years later. I, that doesn't even compute with me. So you graduated 2002, you said? Correct. Uh, I I can't believe a high school wouldn't have a wrestling program in 2002. I mean, Evan, that, you had one, right? Yeah, but I'm, you know, I graduated in 2013. 
Yeah, but still, <laughs> even even so, like even before that, I, I don't remember. My father's well, it's there, uh, in we're, his seventies. We're we're probably East Coast Jersey, PA. This area is like well, probably the oldest wrestling. Like, yeah, it's true. You know. But I can't imagine you guys didn't have wrestling. That that blows my mind. I feel like it's a popular sport everywhere you look, and I think that it just demands discipline. And it'd be good for high school kids. So I'm shocked you didn't have it. So no wrestling for you. You didn't do any of that. No combat sports right away. What were you doing? What sports were you playing, dude? I was playing, uh, I played basketball. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Of course, football. And uh, through shot put and discus and in, in track. So you were really active, even though. And they probably loved you in all those sports. They were still licking their lips. They were, you're probably the reason they made the wrestling program. They probably tried to do it before you got out and they weren't successful. They probably knew you were going to be a great heavyweight for them. But you were very yeah. active in sports. That's good. I mean, as far as getting into combat sports, though, you're doing all these other sports, and it seems like you enjoyed them. How did you come to get into combat sports? There's no real introduction in school through wrestling or anything. Did you go to a gym? How, how did that happen? Oh, so, I, so after high school, I, I went to college for youth ministry. I did my first two years up at Boyce Bible College. It was the undergrad of Southern Seminary. And then my last two years, I transferred to uh, Dallas Baptist University. And my first semester at uh, DBU, a kid in my history class asked me if I wanted to go do jujitsu. I was in five then. And at that point in time, I didn't even know what jujitsu was. <laughs> Different time. And uh, he just explained, hey, it's kind of like wrestling, but instead of pinning the guy, you submit him. And he took me to Travis Luter's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu there in uh, uh, Fort Worth and fell in love with it there. So so your first time there, you were like, this is for me. I love it. Like a duck to water. Or were you like, ah, I got to Did you force yourself to go back or was it boom right away? No, right away. There was, uh, I've, I've always struggled with my weight my entire life. Okay. And uh, I, I will say until a few years ago where I actually learned how to eat right and different things but long story short i know uh my my heaviest i was 340 pounds wow. and so i've always struggled and uh that was a perfect outlet to get in there and have fun uh rolling around great workout and it was a good challenge as well so i'm glad it appealed to you you seem to enjoy it now you, you go from there what's your next discipline you practice i mean i i had a timeline here hold on i wrote this down because 2005 you said jujitsu 2000, what was it, nine? You were, what do we have here? No, that's when you were doing, I can't understand my own writing. What were you doing in 2009? So, two th in, uh, I, I will say in Dallas Fort Worth at Travis Luter's, I wound up meeting Justin Wren. Yes, that's what and it was. Justin wound up getting on the show, The Ultimate Fighter. At that point in time, him and I were best friends, main training partners, roommates. When he got off the show, uh, the beginning of 2009, uh, he came home and he's all, hey, we're moving to Colorado. <laughs> and uh, Trevor Whitman was on the show there. Uh, he was, uh, Justin was on Rashad Evans and uh, uh, Rampage Jackson. And uh, Trevor Whitman was Rashad's striking coach and Trevor's the one who invited Justin to come up, train full time. And Justin tagged me along and I, I moved up to Colorado October of 2009 and started training out at Grudge Training Center under uh, Trevor Whitman. Yeah, I, you know, I remember you telling me that. It's when I wrote that down. I, I can't, it looks, it says Coulter. I think it was supposed to be Colorado. I write very sloppily. I'm not good at that. But I know that you went pro. This is the thing that was amazing to me. You go pro in 2012. You had no experience other than when you started from the guy that you met in your history class. I mean, you, you, had a, you gained experience, but you never had experience before that. You weren't a combat sports guy. You fall in love with it. 2012, you make your pro debut. 2014, you're in UFC. Two years it took you to get there. Uh, that had to be a great feeling to get there in two years. I mean, what was that like? I was blessed. I, man, I was, I was humbled. I was blessed. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful. That's for sure. So uh, is this your full-time job fighting? I mean, you've done it for a while. You've done it at high levels. Is this what you're doing full-time, or what, do you have anything else going on? Uh, from the fighting, of course, and then I, I teach clients cool. on the side. Just uh, I, I work with a handful of ones who aren't uh, draining to me <laughs> and uh, the ones that I actually I teach for free. So um, spend time with them, and then, uh, yeah, I've – got other couple things bringing in revenue, but 
this is this is my my jam for sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's chill out here. You're saying a couple things bringing in revenue. People are gonna, and I know you don't. They're gonna be like, "Is he pushing drugs? What's he doing, bro?" There's other things bringing in revenue. No, he doesn't do that. You have other stuff. I believe, if I'm correct, you were involved with some cryptocurrency company for was it for vets? And you're also involved, uh, from what I could see. I remember you telling me you love coffee. I love coffee too. But it's a coffee company that doesn't have a lot of caffeine. Why would you drink something without a lot of caffeine? That makes no sense. I never understood decaffeinated coffee. I never understood coffee without caffeine. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you invest in something where they're not putting caffeine in your body? I don't get it. Yeah. No, I, I, I love the question. I know uh, uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine started a, a coffee company where, um, I mean, he, he went to school for brain stuff. Don't ask me. I'm it's over my pay grade for sure. But uh, went to school, un- understands how things work and whatnot. And he wanted to create a coffee that was low caffeine but had nootropics in it. No. And uh, he he let me try some. I fell in love with it. Started ordering it, ordering it, and then uh, um, yeah. A couple years later, we had a chat. He was looking for a financial investor, and um, I had some money laying around, and I. Hey, I, I believe in him. I believe in the vision and, uh, yeah, it's grateful earth coffee. It's good stuff. I'll have to try grateful earth coffee. See if it peps me up. That's awesome. You got involved with that. So you had a great, let's talk fighting before we let you out here, because I I like to get to know people, but we got to talk about fighting a little bit. Um, your first time with us, good fight. You enjoyed that fight. That was, that was a, a great showing by you. And then your second fight was Ben Rothwell, which by the way, you're fighting Steve Aurelius. Was that fight supposed to take place last time we were in Denver? Then it got switched and you ended up fighting Rothwell. Is that what, what I, what I saw? That's correct. Yeah. I, I had signed to fight Steve. And then when Ben's opponent, uh, had to pull out, they offered me the opportunity three weeks before and I wasn't going to turn it down. All right, there you go. And so you weren't going to turn it down and you get in there with Ben Rothwell. Now, when you step in with Ben Rothwell, uh, I remember, I remember the night your, your child was there, your family's there, you're in your, your home area. And it's probably a huge opportunity, like you're saying for you. And we're watching the footage now. Talk to me about what happened during the Ben Rothwell fight. Uh, how you felt in there? Man, I'll say the first round and a half, I felt good. And uh, yeah, man, it was, I don't know what it was body shots, how big Ben is, uh, freaking the clinch, <clears throat> one thing or another, my man, I just got exhausted. Um, and yeah, it just came to a point where wasn't going to quit, <laughs> you know, like I'll, I'll keep eating the shots, but, uh, Hey, um, I just, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got Dang in it. there, you got in there. And the thing, I believe you told me that it was your 11 year old son's first time he's ever seen you fight. How do you explain that to an 11 year old who's there seeing his dad get punched in the face and his dad doesn't come out in the winning end. We can understand that as adults, you can understand that as a fighter, but kids, maybe not. What, what was his reaction? Yeah. I'll, I'll say he, uh, so he's 10 now. He was actually nine at the time. Uh, he just turned 10 in June, but, um, it was the first time he ever got to watch me fight. And, uh, I, I remember my ex-wife and I, we were just debating back and forth, you know, cause our kids, you want to protect them. You don't want to scar them. And, uh, I remember when we both agreed that he could go, uh, I went out to see him before the fight and I went up and I picked him up and I held him and I told him, uh, his name's Aiden. And I said, Hey, Aiden, you, you know how, when daddy tells you, that uh, I don't care whether you win or you lose. All I care about is that you try. And he told me yes. And I told him, well, hey, tonight I, I can't guarantee you that I'm going to win. Uh, but I promise you I will go out there and I will do my best. I will try. And he just gave me a big hug after that. And it was it was awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, that you had that discussion with him. And afterwards, I mean, did you have to talk to him again? Uh, you know, daddy tried. It didn't go his way. Was he upset? How did it go afterwards? So a- afterwards, of course, I wasn't there after he saw after he saw me lost. But a close friend of mine, Jeff, that came up from Texas, he uh, he was sitting next to my ex wife and Aiden. And uh, afterwards, uh, he said Aiden was just crying, and he picked him up, put him on his lap, and he told him, "Hey, look around at this entire place, all of these thousands of people, and not one of them would be uh, brave enough to step in that cage against." 
uh, Ben Rothwell. And uh, he said, but your daddy did. And my buddy Jeff told me right there, he he got a smile on his face, got proud. And uh, it was it was a really cool, beautiful moment. Yeah, they seem to think the same in the chat. That's great, Big Ben saying. There's other people, uh, by the way, not the Big Ben. It's our Big Ben, the fan, is saying that, and other people as well. Uh, will your son beat your fight against Steve Aurelius, and, and what can your son expect to see happen? So that that is up in the air right now, uh, just because my ex-wife had hip surgery, hmm. so she won't be able to take him this time, but we're trying to figure it out, and... Uh, for me, I, I hope he is able to go just because he can I, – I want him to see how I handle defeat, you know, and hopefully this time I can get a victory. But he, even if I don't, uh, I, I want him to see how I carry myself afterwards and how everything's about respect. It's really important to show that, especially to, to young kids. Uh, and, and what do you feel, before I let you go, your last remarks about your fight coming up, uh, it was supposed to happen back in April. It's happening now. Where are you at with your fight? I asked Kamosa the same thing was on before you. Mentally, where are you at? What are, what are the fans looking to see out of your fight? What are your predictions? What are your predictions? Yeah, I mean, mentally, physically, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful I am at where I am right now. And, uh, man, I, I don't make any predictions. One thing I know is uh, uh, th this fight game, you could be the best, uh, the best fighter out there. But if it's not your night, you're not going to come away with the win. And I am facing a good, strong, tough opponent. And for me, I I, I just love challenges. And uh, I do like making money, but I'm thankful I'm at a place where I'm not having to fight to pay my bills. So I actually get to fight uh, just because I enjoy the competition. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to test my skills uh, against Steve and, yeah, hopefully come out victorious. We're excited to watch you. I know I speak for all the fans saying that. BKFC.com, you can grab that app. September 22nd, we're in Denver, Colorado. Josh Cudley Bear Copeland's going to be in the ring, and he's going to hopefully walk away with another victory. We wish you a good fight. Thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. We appreciate you being here, man. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in Denver. Make sure you check him out. Uh, of course, the Cuddly Bear himself, like I said, one of the nicest guys in, in combat sports that I've ever met. A wonderful guy. Uh, great time talking to him. we got some more stuff to get into today. Uh, for instance, I, I know we skipped over the calendar of events, and I think they can check that at bkfc.com, or we can do that later. We don't need to do that. What I want to do is I want to talk about the, um, the new look. BKFC fighter with a brand new look changes his appearance drastically. If you haven't seen this, we have a video of what we're talking about. Let's roll the video. Yeah, there's no sound on this video. I forgot I had it because we have to mute it because, you know, YouTube will strike us because they're pains. Um, but yeah, look at Jake Boswick getting his head tattooed. Very Bam Bam Bigelow like. That's not something I would do, nor would I want to deal with the back. It looks pretty cool. I mean, I couldn't do it. It wouldn't look good on me. But, uh, Good for him. Jake Boswick shaves the head, shaves the mustache, has a Bam Bam Bigelow-like tattoo on his head. Uh, Evan, you have tattoos. I have none. Uh, Brandon, I don't know if you have any, but would you ever get your head tattooed? And what would that feel like? Because I've never gotten a tattoo. Uh, I don't think I would. No. But, but they say that certain parts of your body hurt more than others when you get tattooed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the head, because it's thin skin and the skull, would it hurt more? Do yeah, you it probably hurts like a motherfucker. Man, not me, dude. What, really, what my hurt the most was the, uh, the inner thigh. That part sucks. Because it's tender, right? I guess, yeah. That really sucked. How about anybody in the chat? Would you do that on your head and what would it feel like? Let us know. We, I mean, that's not, again, good, good for Jake. I think it looks awesome. I think it's more marketable. It's sellable. It's, it's everything, but not me, bro. You better. I don't like needles. Ugh, I won't go near them. All right, so there's Jake Boswick's new look. Uh, we'll keep you up to date if he does anything else. And then uh, let's talk about, oh, this is interesting, Tony Soto. Tony Soto is looking for a fight. He wants a fight. He's looking for it. And he actually posted on, I think it was Instagram, about um, an idea for a fight. Let's see what Tony's thinking for his fight. There you go. Him and Bobby Taylor. Look at us. Bobby Taylor, we say it every time. He's like Captain America, Rob used to call him. He's got just abs on abs. He's in way better shape than most people I've seen his age, almost everybody. But he's saying here, Bobby Taylor wants to dance. Well, he's up for the challenge. This fight is guaranteed fireworks. I'd see that fight. That's cool. But then I noticed that uh, Tony went on to post uh, on his, I think that was on his Facebook, this one. He posted this. My next opponent will not see a third round. You have my word. Now, he posted that after he called out Bobby Taylor. 
So to me, that shows that he thinks he could dispatch Bobby Taylor in three rounds. Maybe I'm off here, but that's what I noticed with the timestamp. Then there's a whole other layer to this. The other guy that's been complaining, uh, with good reason, I guess, in his mind, Tyler Goodjohn. Tyler Goodjohn, uh, who says he pretty much beat Tony, and, and Tony was gifted the decision, he posted this. <laughs> Jeez. Good sound effects over there, guys. All right, there you go. When Phony Soto gets asked about the rematch, this is what happens. Man, if you're wearing earbuds, I feel bad for you. Let's take that off. I, I didn't realize how bad that was when I heard it through, uh, not through my earbuds. That was rough. <laughs> it was just disgusting. I think one of them was wet. But that's what he's thinking. So here's the thing with Tyler. He's looking for a rematch with Tony. I know he wants it. Some fans said that as well. Now, Tyler, who I love watching fight, win or lose, he's just fun to watch fight. But... I got to wonder if Tyler shouldn't move on from this because I don't know if he's going to get that rematch from what I can see. And um, I, I just don't know if it's happening. So I, I would say, Tyler, he's talked about this now and maybe he move on to somebody else that he's trying to get a fight with because I don't know if the Tony thing's going to happen. I guess we'll wait and see. I mean, You haven't heard the uh, the whisperings around the office? I've heard whisperings, but I was waiting for confirmed for a major announcement. I don't know if we got it, though, did we? Not yet, no. Oh, man. So we'll wait and see. Maybe we'll get it during the show. They claimed if we get this major announcement during the show that uh, we can go breaking asked. news with it. Not Nothing yet. yet. All right, we'll keep it going for a couple minutes. We've got more stuff to talk about. The other uh, info is... Kai Stewart uh, recently posted on our, our, our world champion, Kai Stewart, on Facebook, I believe it was. He says, announcement, exciting news. I'm back in fight camp, gearing up for my first world title defense and waiting to give the opportunity. Oh, there isn't a sponsor, which support him, but he's going to sponsors. Um, so he's looking for sponsors. You can see that Kai's getting ready to get back in the ring. I don't know who Kai's going to fight. I'd be interested to see it because I've said it before. Kai's got grit to him. He's a wrestler. Uh, Kai has been on the, on, on, on the, the, in the mouth, I should say. Oh, that's not the way I right say it. Kai has been on the mind uh, of people, like at press conference. He got brought up at that UFC press conference with uh, Sugar Sean. Sugar Sean basically called him trash. He's tired of hearing from his DMs. Kai has been at the Rick Ross pool party. Kai has been, well, he was with the Tech Nine concert on stage with the title. Ty has been around Montana everywhere and outside of Montana promoting BKFC. And Kai is also, uh, you know, promoting the world title. So I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I am curious to see who Kai's going to fight because I don't know in Kai's mind who he wants or who the best match is for him. I'd like to see that. Evan, do we have a good match for Kai? Can you think yeah. of anybody? Oh, it's... I mean, I have an idea who it might be. Well, I'm like biased because I know who it is. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It, stuff changes a lot. So are we talking about the same guy here? I don't know. Mal, Mal, show me. Don't show yourself on camera. Show me. You know how to show me. I can't show you because I'm on camera. Oh, whatever. All right. Well, we'll going to be good. He's yeah. He is uh, in a stacked division, and basically anybody in the top five he fights. It's going to be good. good. It's going to be good. So Kai Stewart looking to come back. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and then as far as everything else we're looking at here, there's so much more stuff to cover. Oh, here's one. I have a question for you, Evan. It's about Broken Brandon. Okay. Did he hit his deadline? Last week, uh, the president was on the show, Dave Feldman, if you were watching, and you mentioned the prospect series. And yeah, it's been out. It was out on Friday. So did he hit his deadline of 11.59 or whatever it was? Yeah. Oh, he did? All right. Hey. Did you think he did? You not see it? it was a, yeah, I mean, do you not pay attention? Bro, I do yeah. pay attention, but I had two. Was this Friday? It's a joint operation. A Me joint. and Brandon fucking hammered it out. Good job, guys. Got it done. Good job, because Dave, Dave, Dave mentioned that he said by noon. I think it was by midnight. No, I said by 5 p.m. Yeah, he said Friday. He I, said yeah, Friday. end of day. Yeah. And Dave was Pacific saying noon. Time. I said, no, I think, I believe it was midnight. If you go back and watch it, he was, I heard him getting all ornery the other yeah. day with you and you slapped him back into shape. That's right. That's right. That's what we do over here. <laughs> he acts tough, but when behind closed doors. There's a lot of us it, like that in the staff. You know who the real boss is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They're, they're the real boss sis, sis, sis. Let's see if, he, if he's here. We'll know because he'll come yeah, busting in. <laughs> uh, he'll just come <laughs> rocketing in. Uh, okay, so we're glad that he hit that. Uh, his, I just didn't know. I knew it was posted. So check that out, the prospect series. I don't know That's if he good. hit his deadline. People like it. Yeah, they seem to be getting a, a good feedback about it. I'm excited. Excited about to see where it goes. Make sure you it's watch a cool that. Idea. Like BKFC.com. Just speculate, Brian. Pretend you don't know. That's what Mike says. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I don't know much. I only know what they tell me in the chat here. Let's talk about um, oh, this is a big announcement. I don't know if this has been announced yet. This was right before we went on the air. If you're in the Salt Lake City area, we have a yeah. graphic we're gonna put up for you. Put it up. This is big news. There you go. Boom. Special guest, Chris Lytle. We've been doing more and more tryouts. I love this. September 23rd, Utah tryouts. You can see all the info up there, Elite Performance. 
where to go sign in at 2 p.m. seminar to follow. You should register. BKFC.com slash tryouts. Get in there because we say it till we're blue in the face. We were talking about Lorenzo Hunt earlier. He came from tryouts. Uh, I could go on and on. Everybody that you see has come from tryouts almost, unless they've been in like UFC and we signed them, a lot of them coming from tryouts. Now with the prospect series, you're going to see the tryouts probably lead into the prospect series. So we're, we're going to keep keep you kind of uh, abreast of what's going on, but make sure you get involved on the prospect series. Um, what is this? I see Mike in this comment section. Mike keeps saying, we want to hear your thoughts on the world title situation. Hmm. Do I have thoughts on that? Evan, do I? On what world title? That's what he's saying. He said, let's see. He says, uh, Swervo Cruz, shout out to you. He said, just speculate, act like you don't know, Brian. I don't know what he... I, pre- I think he's talking about uh, Kai's. On the, on the vacant heavyweight title, he said. Is, do, he goes, just speculate, pretend oh, you don't know. I don't know. Just, who. I really don't. I don't know. We've had, honestly, I don't lie on the show. I don't lie anywhere. I'm too transparent. Gets me in trouble. But I really don't know anything about the vacant heavyweight title. I know nothing. I know we've done, we're doing so much other stuff behind the scenes that I've seen that honestly, while that's important to me and you as well, <laughs> I've been up to my eyeballs and other stuff and, and getting other events, getting legalized, just all that stuff, paying attention to that. You hear a lot of things, but until it comes from, from us, it ain't ready to go yet. So that's not me pretending to speculate, I promise, Mike. It's not knowing. And Evan will tell you, I don't know much of anything, do I, Evan? No. <laughs> even, in, even in life, they were making fun of me because I couldn't remember Brandon was. He's like, have you ever fixed anything in your own house? I said, yeah, a couple times. <laughs> Because they're fixed, they're always like hanging stuff up. I'm like, you guys are. I was uh, painting this morning before I got yeah. in. Is that why you're acting silly? Yeah. Those fumes. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it. What are you painting for? Because you have people well, coming I know, over? Yeah. So I, I want to get the house nice. And I noticed the, uh, like by the window, the paint was like coming off. So I, I stripped it down and then spat and sanded it and spackled it and then it dried overnight and I painted it this morning. What time did you get up? I slept in. I got up at like nine. Wow. Yeah. Well, all right. nice to live near the office. BKFC Nut says got to be Arnold Adams against Mick Terrell for the for the heavyweight title. That's that's his that's his thought. I keep texting the brass seeing if we can put things out, and they're saying I it's know. not ready yet. So. We're, we're trying, dude. Andrew Martin says Brian, as BKFC gets bigger and gets more names, will tryouts go away? I don't see tryouts going away. I think no, they're very tryouts important. Tryouts a great a great thing to like launch us into new markets. So you like you know, it's like a breeding ground <laughs> yeah. too. For, for new talent. Because look, here's the thing. You know fighters. You've seen it throughout your life. We love the fighters we're watching now. We don't want them to go away. But as the years wear on, we're going to have to look for more bare-knuckle fighters. And this isn't boxing or MMA where you can throw a rock and hit a bare-knuckle fighter. We have to start breeding them. And as Dave said on the program a while ago, too, we're looking at maybe one day having bare-knuckle gyms, which help promote or uh, make the UFC come to prominence in, in Dave's estimation. So th- there's a lot of stuff going on that we'll keep you abreast, too. Uh, abreast. let's see what, abreast. You like that? <laughs> you like that? Let's get back to Evans painting his house and his wedding here. So what time, what time are the, I do, what time are the girls coming over to get dressed? What time are you, you and your friends getting dressed? Tell me about what the day is going to look like for you. Cause I know you're Mr. M- emotions. Well, I was told I'm getting thrown out of my house really early. So like I got to be at the venue at one, but the girls are having all their makeup and shit done at the house at eight. So she's like, you got to be gone. <laughs> Where am Bye. I supposed to go? Yeah, I'm going to go like sit in a diner for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. So there's, your, your wife, this is different than normal when people get married. Your wife's throwing you out of your house before the wedding, not yeah. after a couple of weeks in. Right. Okay, interesting. So this will be good. So are you you painted for the females to come over there and enjoy your, your, your humble abode that you have? Yep. You'll be out there. Is there going to be any drinking at your wedding or before your wedding? Sometimes people don't allow drinking before the ceremony. Uh, I know the boys will be bringing some stuff around. So. I said drinking. I didn't say some stuff. Well, yeah, <laughs> we got to people speculate, right? You, yeah, it was your fault. You said, you said the other day, something about your friends being crazy. I didn't say anything. at the bachelor party. You said they were nuts. No, they weren't. Yeah. They were great. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So yeah, we'll keep, what we'll, else we got? We'll keep you what updated on, on that. Enough uh, about me. Let's uh, about Evan doesn't like when the spotlights on. Him. I want to spotlight some fighters. That's what it. it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're getting married. What do we got so coming? Who BKFC we 50, BKFC 51. Uh, we're looking forward to those. We, we did miss the calendar earlier. We can go through that in a minute, too. So BKFC 50, been talking about the whole show. 51, we're going to get into more next week. Um, uh, I'm going to try to have some people on from 51. I'm excited for Britton Hart and Melanie Shaw. We always shout out uh, Mrs. Shaw, who watches the show, 65-year-old Mrs. Shaw. She told me that that's how I should shout her out. We appreciate that. That's for the women's world title. We're looking forward to that. And just before that, of course, you know about September 22nd coming up here in Denver. People are excited about that. And then the South Carolina announcement that we've been waiting for. We thought we were going to break it today on Told the show. It'll be ready today, but not right now. How much longer? Let's stay Sometime on the air. Sometime today. What, like some, 6 o'clock tonight? We'll just stay on the air the whole time. 
Uh, you, gotta, you know, things have to be signed on the line, and until it's signed, you well, can't say shit. You can't. And, you know, people I see online, because we read, at least I do, I read a lot of stuff. I don't always comment, but people saying, oh, they're not announcing things. Oh, they're not doing this. Yeah. I mean, we know we're going there. We know the building. We just don't want to announce you it ahead of time. You can't. And when people go people online and they, yeah. they prematurely announce things before things are in writing, like, if we don't say something's done, it ain't done yet. Exactly. Until so, we put it out. No, because uh, people, I, I get it. They want to speculate, and yeah. we're giving, we're feeding them breadcrumbs to let them speculate because we're waiting on announcing stuff. But it's never that we don't know what we're doing. I saw somebody complaining about Denver, and right. as uh, soon as we're uh, able to announce something, we, tr- we do. You know it. what I mean? <laughs> we do. I know, but they don't understand that. And I understand. They're excited. I get it. They're I get pissed excited. too. I'm like, come on. Me too. We'll get the shit done so we can put it out. I, I see all the comments because we're excited. Yeah. We're excited about it. So. We're excited for that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, also um, BKFC, you got Thailand coming up. That's going to be Britton Hart in the co-main event. Uh, we just saw her a minute ago. Britton Hart in the co-main event uh, against Poe Denman. That'll be cool. And then, of course, you got the, this, this fight that everybody... Look, Asia's going to come unglued for this fight. There's people stateside that are going to come unglued. This is going to be a big fight. If you're not a, a Muay Thai fan, you might not realize how big of a fight this is. Look, I didn't know a lot about it. Um, but here we are, and I've read up on it, and I've heard our fighters. We played Christine Faria getting excited. She has studied him throughout the years. A lot of fighters are very excited about this. We are too, so we're looking forward to that, and we'll keep you updated with the South Carolina news. Uh, Again, BKFC 50 and 51, bkfc.com. Grab the app, $7.99 a month. It's got everything on there. We're excited about it. That's pretty much all I have to cover today. Do you guys have anything else you want to get to? Did I miss anything so I don't get yelled at here? I don't know. Go read the comments. I, I read the... Uh, so let's, uh, we'll finish. Hey, let's do something really quick. It wasn't really on this show, but I want to try it. We're going to try this for a couple of weeks. Uh, for lack of a better term, you're writing on a kind of a wall, so we're going to call it graffiti. So anything, as you've been watching this show or watching past shows that has stuck out to you about Evan, about me, about Brandon, any comment you've heard that's made you laugh, anything you want to write, Write it on the wall, and we'll start reading out graffiti. We'll just go boom, 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 and we'll read a couple of them. Uh, uncensored, whatever you would like. Uh, say his name, Brian. Oh, Perry. He wants me to talk about Mike Perry. This Big Ben wants to spotlight Mike Perry. Mike Perry's got a lot of spotlight on him, and we will spotlight him when we find out who he's going to fight, and we, we're sure about when he's going to fight. I know he was on Hawani, right? And I think somebody wrote this in the chat the other day, but uh, we'll keep you updated. Again, when it doesn't come directly from us, Exactly. <laughs> so I see. Kyle, we, I don't know. Trust me, if we could say something, it would be all over the fucking place. Here, here's here's but Kyle. We can't. Here's Kyle. So does that mean Perry was not supposed to say anything about Dallas? I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't answer that for you. Look, Evan went wrong. Evan went off camera quick. Uh, boo cow! Somebody wrote that they're excited for the boo cow fight uh, in the comment section. Anything else you want to write? Keep it up. Look, we love you. I'll give you one more reminder. You can send anything you want into. The Bare Knuckle Show at gmail.com. Uh, bro- broken Brandon versus Brandon Lambert. Uh, look, no knock on Brandon Lambert, but I don't know if Brandon Lambert wants to fight here. I know he's been offered a couple times. I don't know what's happened. I know he's pulled out. Uh, Brandon is the fourth best looking guy in the room, BKFC Nut wrote. Man, they're hammering you, Brandon. Uh, Ouch. Yeah. Big, Fuck all <laughs> Big Ben says Broken Brandon versus Brandon Lambert should be the Texas main event. Yeah, that would sell huge. I, I'd, I'd actually pay for that. I'd watch that. Uh, so that's what people are saying in the chat. Listen, we appreciate every week you're with us. Congratulations on the wedding. There's a nice one for you from Adam, from Adam Martin. Thanks. Uh, congratulations. He said thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, we really appreciate you guys. Spread the word of the Bare Knuckle Show. Again, make sure you hit the, uh, the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe so you can find out more. Put it on your socials if you can uh, because we want to keep growing this thing. And when we grow it, if you're a podcaster, because I see some of them in the room, I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I see Mike and Mission there. Uh, we'll all continue to grow together. We're looking forward to it, and, and we, we thank you guys for covering us and for just being fans. So listen, we're going to end the show now. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hanging out, as always. Until next week, remember, get bucked up. Am I taking too long? Don't cut me. <laughs> and knuckle up. Oh, you son of a bitch. Fighting Championship presents BKFC 50, Friday, September 22nd. In the main event, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt puts his world title on the line against the undefeated Chris Camosi. Also, heavyweights collide in the co-main event when heavy hitter Josh Cudley Bear Copeland knuckles up with former boxing champ Steve Aurelius. Watch history unfold live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com.